three, two, one. Okay, we're live. I uh, just want to apologize right off the bat because uh, we did have a plan to do a scheduled stream, and I'm quite a bit late, as you can tell by the time. But nevertheless, I'm here now. Um, everybody's had to get new stream keys and reset everything because of some security issues on the platform, but hopefully that's been resolved. So today, uh, what I'm planning to do is just share a couple of things with you. Now, as you know, this is uh, this channel is focused on HeroQuest and HeroQuest fandom. Uh, so I've got my HeroQuest miniatures here. These are the monsters. And I was just going to do like a little comparison because I recently purchased um, a game that's related to HeroQuest known as Battlemasters. So Battlemasters was released in 1992, which is near the tail end of the popularity of HeroQuest overall. That was the same year that the Elf and Barbarian Quest packs were released in the United States uh, for the North American territory with that rule set. And there was a computer game that was released in 94 called Legacy of Sorosil on the Amiga system, which was a bit obscure, and Amiga computers, which, you know, there were hardcore fans for those. But as far as board games go, this was basically the last year that anything new came out. So uh, Battlemasters is known by different names in different territories. I think it's called um, the Claymore Saga in, in Germany, which I think is pretty cool. But the one that I got is the U.S. version. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it here. I'll just be a moment while I go grab that. So as you can see there, the box is huge. Um, it actually takes up more room than the HeroQuest box. It's uh, a little longer on the side. Uh, but it's it's pretty neat. It's got uh, some great artwork on the front. Now this is the same style of artwork that you may have seen on the less popular advanced HeroQuest. Um, let me just switch to my other view. Okay. So you can see there uh, the the board, and this is not my bed. As you can see, this is just a little poker tablecloth of felt. But yeah, this art style is what um, Games Workshop, uh, the makers of Warhammer Fantasy Battle and Fantasy RPG, this was the art style that they used in all their boxes. And as you can see, it's Milton Bradley once again. Advertises from the makers of HeroQuest, and I believe Stephen Baker was involved in the design of this game. And this game, even more so than HeroQuest, is definitely designed as kind of a stepping stone, training wheels, junior version, simplified edition of Wargaming. Now, what is Wargaming? Well, think about it this way. So HeroQuest was a board game that some people call it Dungeons & Dragons in a box. And that's really not fair because Dungeons and Dragons has its own board game version, actually several, such as Dragon Strike and so forth. Now TSR, all that, that's now owned by Hasbro, so Hasbro really has control of Dungeons and Dragons, Hero Quest. I'm not sure the status of Battlemasters, but uh, Milton Bradley is owned by Hasbro, and it's all kind of in the same thing. But Dungeons and Dragons is its own game. It's a dungeon crawler. You have different classes and of uh, types of heroes and they go on adventures and you roll dice and it can use miniatures or it can just be sort of a theater of the mind pencil and paper RPG. Well, Hero Quest was a much more simplified board game that had the kind of epic fantasy, high fantasy elements, uh, very much inspired by Dungeons and Dragons and uh, of course J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Conan the Barbarian, all that kind of stuff. Well, Battlemasters, instead of taking a group of heroes through a uh, missions in a dungeon or a treasure vault or a tomb, you know, fighting monsters and searching for treasure. What this is all about is armies fighting each other on the battlefield. But it's so simplified that you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. And the old style of war games, from what I understand, because I was not part of that whole uh, thing, it was a hobby that was engaged in by adults. So instead of just, oh, I'm playing with my toys, 
on the floor here, um, actually it was, you would set up your armies, like maybe your tin soldiers or your, uh, usually the figures are made out of lead. Or tin was heavily you know, leadened, either the paint or the metal itself. You know, um, soldiers from like the Napoleonic era, Revolutionary War, Civil War, um, even World War One into later eras, World War II. You put the figures on the on the usually not a board. Usually it was just like a table, or even like fake terrain. So you'd make like fake trees and water and stuff like that. So it could be very involved, and you would have to measure the distances between the troops to see, you know, is the wind speed like if you're firing arrows, are you able to, you know, is your cannon going to be able to hit that? Uh, target from a distance you know are you going to get stuck in a marsh is there going to be obstacles that'll prevent you from winning the battle and usually you'd have huge piles of dice that you would roll and games could just go on for hours and hours and people loved it and they spent a lot of time painting all of the miniature figures so that their army looked really cool well at a certain point games workshop uh created this thing called uh, warhammer fantasy and again since i'm not um an aficionado of that genre this is all just what i've read and heard from others is that um up until that point more or less y you these different games you could pretty much come to the table and play a competitive game you know you have one army your opponent has another army with uh, whatever miniatures you could find so any toy soldiers that looked vaguely like they belonged could could uh, suffice what uh, the genius of Games Workshop was, they decided, okay, we're going to have this whole catalog of fantasy figures from Citadel Miniatures. Um, some of them may have not have had any relation to each other, but they just decided to just create rules for all of them. So you had some gnomes, you had some centaurs, you had some knights, you had some orcs, different monsters, giants, and characters like that. And you would just say, okay, well, here's stats for all of them. Here's how they fight. Here's how they would move on the battlefield and just release a book. And so you could sell this catalog of miniatures that you already have, essentially, and uh, get people to try to collect them and play your game. Well, it, the next phase was for them to just create their own original miniatures. Um, and again, I'm simplifying the history here, but they had Chaos Warriors, Fimmers, um, Britannian knights and, and so forth, high elves and so forth. And the idea would be you would buy their specific miniatures so that you could play in their world using their stats. Because yes, you could just take a thimble and say, this is a, a, a knight. But why do that when you can have a really cool looking figure and he's all painted up and he's got a little flag and, and, and everything and there's fake grass and whatever it was designed for the game so they had metal and they had plastic well battle masters takes that idea and simplifies it quite a bit puts it all in a box for you and i'll just show you the other side of the box and this is a very different game from hero quest like i said because look at that right away you can tell look at the size of that board it's gigantic right it's not even a board it's actually a ma uh, play mat a battle mat it's uh, it's not like those thin plastic sheets, like when you're a kid you play with Play-Doh on them like that. No, it's it's more like a, like a shower curtain or a, maybe a piece of vinyl that you use as a raincoat. Like it's pretty heavy duty, so it could take a lot of abuse. But here they're playing on a table. A lot of people played it on the floor. Now, if you're an older person, you may have trouble just reclining on the floor trying to play this. And take a look at these dice. I'm going to switch cameras here. So if you can see, let's get a close up here. See those dice? It looks a lot like HeroQuest, doesn't it? Well, that's by design. These these are the makers of HeroQuest. So you're, you've got these armies. Yeah, you're rolling dice. You've got um, three skulls, uh, two blanks, and a shield. So it basically has the same exact odds as uh, Monster Defense in Hero Quest, if, if you remember that. Because with that one, it was like there's a one in six chance for a Monster Shield for Monster Defense, two Hero Shields, and then three Skull Hits. Well, in this game, each of these units that you've got, see there's like a, I'll show you, but there's like a little platform. 
and these are just plastic figures and they have a little tab at the bottom. Now you can see how the HeroQuest figures have a built-in base to cover each of the squares on the on the board representing the dungeon in the HeroQuest game. Well in this game you move the whole thing at once and you've got this army on top and there's a little label that shows the name of it so like for example the mighty cannon or the crossbowman and it gives a number which represents how many dice they roll in attack and in defense and each of these can take three hits before it's destroyed so in the so one hit you put a skull tile and the skull tiles are very similar to the hero quest ones but they're slightly different um, and they're one-sided little cardboard you put one for one hit, two for two hits, and on the third hit, you just remove it from the battlefield. And the way that you win, most of the... There's one mission where uh, if the Chaos Army, because it's the Chaos chaos Army versus the Imperial Army, so the Empire and, and presumably Zargon's forces, but he's never mentioned. It's just the Armies of Chaos. So for all we know, this took place before Hero Quest, or it could take place at the same time, or just in the same universe. Who knows? But... Uh, there's one where the Chaos Army can win by just ascending to the tower, which I'll show you that in a second here. Um, but otherwise, it's just elim eliminate the enemy army. So once you eliminate them all, you win. So here's the tower. So it's this piece of plastic, and as you can see, it's hollow. It's Basically, if you follow the directions, it's fairly easy to assemble. If you don't look at the directions, you're going to have a hard time putting this thing together, and it's just going to fall apart. So it's just a piece of plastic. But the army that goes on top of here, mounted armies and the cannon and the ogre can't go up here. But everybody else gets one extra when they're attacking. And then um, I think they you get one, whoever's attacking them gets one less uh, attacking, if that makes sense. So it's almost like the opposite of a pit trap. But I'll show you what's in the box here. And I've not actually had a chance to play this game yet. I would certainly like to, but I need to find somebody who has enough space to actually play it. So I'll probably end up playing it with uh, family or friends because uh, where I'm at now, I just don't have the space to lay all this out and keep it out for you know a couple hours, whatever it would take for the game. So and you don't have to paint these, but as before, they do encourage you to paint them if if you want to. But everything is here, so you don't have to buy a big, huge army. That was the problem with Warhammer, Warhammer 40K or 40,000, all these things. They encourage you to buy, buy, buy. Just keep buying more and more figures, make this huge army, and then spend hours and hours and hours painting them, because otherwise you're going to look like a noob when you go to a tournament and you've just got uh, unpainted figures. Plus, there's the kind of, is this going to be a play-to-win situation? Because what if somebody you know, has a lot of cash and they just spend a fortune on a gigantic army? No one's going to want to play them because nobody will have a chance. Unless you say, okay, fine, you can't use all those great figures that you bought and spent all that time painting. So, I don't know. As a, as a hobby, it seems like quite a money trap if, if, uh, if that's what you want to do. But this simplifies it. You've got it all here. And it's really ingenious the way they do it because you don't have to do any measurements. Everything is just hex-based, so you've got all these hexagons. And um, you draw cards. All you got to do is draw cards to, to tell like who moves and who attacks and so forth. Everybody can um, move and then attack. So like Hero Quest, you could attack or move, move or attack. All right, do an action. Here it's always move and then attack, unless it's a ranged uh, unit. So like if archers, crossbowmen, or the cannon, they would either move or attack. And there's two super units. So the, the Chaos Army has the Ogre Champion. It's this big giant monster. He uh, has a deck of six cards, and he goes through those cards, and it just tells him when he can attack and defend, or attack and uh, move so he could go through the entire deck on his on his turn if if he is drawn now every time he gets hit so the ogres has six body points instead of three so double everybody else every time he takes a hit he get can only draw one fewer card so five four three two one and then he's destroyed 
when he takes the six hits. The cannon defends with two, but it actually has these tiles that it uses. Um, it's kind of an interesting way that it does things. So you set out the target tile on the one you want to hit. I'll switch back. So I guess I'm kind of talking about the rules now because the rule book is kind of long and kind of boring and it keeps referring back and forth, back and forth. So you put this on the one that you want to shoot and then you've got all these tiles here. So you trace a line, the shortest line of hexagons back to the cannon. And so you could shoot something, it's up to eight squares away from the cannon and its crew. So you draw the first one. Okay, that's a bounce. That means that uh, the unit, whatever is on the square, takes one hit of damage. And so what would the next one be? Oh, it's an explosion. So the explosion means that's the end of the cannon's turn. So it could just explode harmlessly on a, on a hexagon, or if there's a unit there, that unit is instantly destroyed. So I guess in theory you could destroy your own troops if you weren't careful. So you probably want to shoot around them. Now if the first one that you draw is an explosion, then that means the cannon's in danger. And you got to draw one more, and if it's an explosion, then the cannon destroys itself. It's called a misfire. But let's say it's something else. Let's say it's the bounce. That means the cannon just takes one damage. Um, and I think that... Uh, if you shoot, if you want to shoot something that's right next to, like adjacent to the cannon, it's the same rules apply. So you could damage the cannon by doing that. Um, oh, there's another explosion. But yeah, if you get explosion for the first one and then an explosion for the second one, you're destroyed. The cannon is destroyed instead of the enemy. Um, instead of the bouncing, there's also, oh yeah, this. This is just like the cannonball sails harmlessly over whatever's on that square. But if what you want to do is you want to keep drawing this or this until you get to the target, and then you want to get this to destroy it instantly, to destroy the target. So that's how the cannon works. So it's actually pretty powerful. And some have said that the Imperial Army is more powerful than the Chaos Army. Now, the Chaos Army actually has more units. So there's there's that. But there are some some missions where they don't have to kill everybody on the opposite side to win. So anyway, but you've got 10 of these, 10 of these. Uh, this is the target one, has an explosion on the other end. The others have those three types. And of course you can see they're all cardboard. They're, they're kind of thick tiles. So you got 10 of those. You've got these terrain tiles. And this is about the size of the hexagons on the board. So these are this is a marsh. You can see there's some damage there. I'm going to try to repair and restore these as best I can. But, or I'm sorry, this isn't a marsh. This is a ford. So there's water that you can't traverse. Uh, you don't have any marine units. And so um, this, this rocks, this allows you to traverse it. So if you've got one of these, you can go over that part of the part of the board. Otherwise, the terrain, other than the water, um, I don't think it matters that much. I think it's only the marshes. Okay, so here you've got this fortifications, this palisades. So your units can't cross over this stuff. And if they're trying, if let's say there's a unit here and there's a unit over here, the unit that's attacking through attacks with one less, so they get a, um, a disadvantage. The ones that are here get an advantage, I believe. Now the... Um, the uh, ranged units, they just shoot right over the top of this. It doesn't affect them at all, if I understand correctly. So, again, I'll have to play through it myself. But I've seen a few games. I've watched a few games on uh, online and seen how it goes. So this is a marsh. Again, you can't cross through it. You can see, I love the artwork, you know, the sunken cannon and the skeletons. So other people who've tried to go through have fallen in. You can't go retrieve that cannon and use it, unfortunately. There's no treasure to be had. Oh, yeah, different different arrangements. Notice how this only covers three sides and this covers um, two, three, four sides. So different versions of that. Another marsh. Here you've got the barricades only on two sides. The marsh and then yeah another marsh. So one, two, three, four of these hexagon uh, terrain tiles. 
Okay, and then you've got these, now all these plastic bags obviously didn't come with it. This is just my attempt to arrange things a little bit better. You've got these rubble tiles. Now these rubble tiles are actually for use with the, there's three of them, and there's nothing on the other side. These are for use with the tower. So if the tower gets hit uh, by cannon fire, by a cannon explosion, it, it, you put one of these on the tower. And if it takes three, the tower is destroyed so you can remove it from the, from the board, from the battle mat. So that's what that is. So there's three of those. Then you've got these pieces here. So these are the unit tiles. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14. Actually, there's a 15th one that's just gray on both sides. It's not used for anything. But these are called uh, unit tiles. And the point of these is when you're playing a campaign, because there's two ways to play the game. One is you just you lay out the mat, and the chaos team goes first, and they draw a card from their stack, because they each have a pile of cards, which I'll show you in a minute. And they put a unit down on one side of the board, because there's four sides. I keep saying board, but it's the mat. And that's where they go. And so the opposite side is where the Imperial Army goes. So then the Imperial Army will draw a unit and put it there. And then Chaos Empire, Chaos Empire, until everybody's got all their army put out. And then the game begins drawing the cards. You shuffle them all together. So there's one pile. Start drawing cards. So one army could, in theory, have all their units first. And then the other person finally gets to move. Now, just like HeroQuest, every time you get attacked, you can defend right away. But uh, the, the turns are decided by the draw of the cards. So that, that's all it is. There's no movement dice to roll or anything. Everybody always moves one square except for the, um, the ogre who draws based on or moves based on cards. And occasionally you will have a card that allows your unit to move two spaces instead of one. But yeah, with the campaign, this is the second way to play. So I told you about the basic way. So it's just a battle. You know, who knows? Um, well, with the campaign, there's there's five battles. And you can play them in any order, but they encourage you to play them in a certain order, in chronological order. And you get, if you win, you get a certain number of points. So it's possible to lose a battle and still win the war if at the end you have more points than your opponent. And each battle is supposed to take about an hour, so it's probably more like two hours, depending. Um, but yeah, you would use these units uh, tokens. So if you look at the symbol there, that tells you what it is. So I believe that is, let's see, is that an orc? Nope, that's, that's an ogre. So this is an ogre. And so when you see that symbol on the map, then you know to put this one on that square. And that's where he starts. So you've got an orc there. Sorry about the focus there, autofocus. Yeah, you got an orc, and see that symbol that's on the shields? So the game comes with a bunch of stickers, and a lot of the characters have shields or banners, and you use that symbol to identify this particular unit. So you put that, slot that in, and then that's where he goes. But yeah, the campaign's really were the only place where you need those. So I'll put those away. So yeah, just as Hero Quest is meant to be a simplified introduction into the world of tabletop, like dungeon crawling adventures, so to Battle Masters is set in the Hero Quest universe, so to speak, Hero Quest world, which is loosely based on the Warhammer fantasy world, and gives you an introduction, a simplified version of, of uh, fantasy wargaming. Because it's all about the armies. So here's some of the units. Yeah, I'll start showing you the units. Well, no, let's do the cards first. Okay. So here we've got the dice. Now, you'll notice these dice look different than the ones on the box. That's because the North American or U.S. version, see, look how badly worn those are. This is just painted on. Um, so obviously they've had a lot of use, and of course they got blanks. And so these are pretty standard, you know, matte finished dice. 
or I guess you could call that satin finish maybe, but they're plastic. And the uh, the European dice are have the rounded corners and their the images are inscribed, so it's it's much closer to the the Hero Quest dice, whereas these are just kind of their own thing. But obviously you you have the, the different symbols. Um, I'd really like to get some of those European dice because I think they would last a lot longer and they just look cooler. But these were the ones that U.S. players got. And these are really easy to find. The the European dice are much more expensive. So, but this is what it came with. Yeah. So the European version and the uh, North American or U.S. version. I'm not sure about the other, like all the different regions, because just like HeroQuest, it was released in a lot of different countries. I'm not sure which ones had what, but I know that the the let's say the U.K. version, the uh, the banners, the stickers have different images and different formats and the dice are different but other than that i think well and the cover for the instruction manual is different but other than that i think it's the same everything's the same so unlike hero quest where the rules are quite different um battle masters it's it's pretty similar pretty streamlined so now can you use the tower as a dice tower uh maybe <laughs> it, it'd be nah not really not very practical so I just say roll it on the mat or get a dice box um, to do it properly. But anyway, those are the dice. So six of those, six cubes, six-sided dice, D6s as they call them in gaming parlance. Uh, then you've got your cards. Now these, without even measuring them, I'm going to say these are like bridge size cards. they got their little rounded corner. And it's As you can see, it's kind of a not much finish to them maybe a matte or satin finish and you've got your six ogre cards so these are used for the ogre on the chaos side so ogre moves ogre attacks and it's almost like you don't need have to know how to read because you can just look at the picture so he could attack multiple times let's say he can move three times and attack three times and of course, when he gets damaged, you take one away. Now, I would just say, just draw that many, because if you start taking them away, I mean, you're going to shuffle them and you're going to know which one. I don't know. That's how I would do it. So we got those. And then you've got not 60, but 59 of these Battlemasters cards. So it almost looks like someone printed that, but no, it's, uh, these are the originals. It's 1992. Milton Bradley Hasbro Games Workshop. So with this, you've got, these are shuffled together. So you've got, let's see, you draw a card and, oh, the Chaos Army gets to go first. So see that picture? You've got Beastmen, so that's one of the units, Orcs, and Goblins. So now the manual explains, like, what those are if you don't know what they are, but those are all bad guys. So you can move them in any order. You just okay, you know what, I'm going to move the Orcs, I'm going to move the... Beast mana, and I'm going to move the goblins. And they don't actually have to move or attack if you don't want to. And if the unit has already been destroyed, then you just ignore that one. And then once once you've moved that, then you draw the next card. So what's the next one going to be? Oh, look, the Imperial Army gets to go. Oh, but this one, uh, let's see. Those are the... Notice how the horse has armor and the guy has two plumes. That's a Lord Knight. So Imperial Lord Knights, and then um, Imperial Knights. So there's two different types of knights. So these are like stronger knights. And they each, I know it shows the, the shield on top, but this just means they get one extra attack die when they attack. So you get to move both those, and then they get one extra. So I'll just show you the different cards here. So you've got Imperial Army. So you've got uh, Men-at-Arms. So HeroQuest fans will remember the Halbeardier, Halbeardier, the guy who has the Halbeard. Of course, he's got a shield now. And these figures are very reminiscent. And this uh, crossbowman and bowman. So he gets to move those. And let's see, the, the, um, the crossbowmen get to shoot up to three hexagons away, whereas the archers only get to shoot two uh, hexagons away. So they actually, the, the Imperial Army has better ranged 
ability than the Chaos Army because their archers are, are a bit weaker. So you got the Chaos Army. Now you've got the kind of looks like a Chaos Warrior on a, a horse. But notice it's again it's got that horse armor. This is the uh, uh, Lords of Chaos. They get to move. And then these are the Goblin Wolf Riders or just Wolf Riders. Giant Wolf. It should be familiar to HeroQuest fans. And then we've got the Mighty Cannon. So the cannon gets to take its turn. It's got a cannon crew. So there's only one cannon. Now, Battlemasters did have two packs that were released only in Europe called the Reinforcement Packs. There was the Chaos Warband, which sounds very reminiscent of uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and the uh, Imperial Lords. Imperial Lords? Yeah. So all they did is they just provided a bunch of extra units. And all they do is they piggyback, piggyback on the rest of the units. So I think the bad guys get like two ogres and a bunch of beastmen and some more archers. And the good guys get um, some more knights and and so forth. But they do introduce introduce some new units, but really it's just the, these stronger knights, except there's only one of them. So he's got one body point. Um, I guess just as an extra, like, yeah, just to, rather than have a full complement of, of soldiers. But anyway, uh, there's some other differences as we go. We'll cover it. So these are Chaos Warriors, so this should look familiar. So instead of just a, just an axe, he's got a, a pole arm here, and he's got a shield. And the helmet looks a little bit different, but that's a Chaos Warrior. That is uh, Lord of Chaos and Chaos Archers. So this is a, a new unit. They get to shoot two hexagons away. So they're just the equivalent of the uh, Imperial Archers. What do we got here? Gee, that's like the same card. So there's multiples of some of these. So you get to move all of those that you happen to have. And if you don't have them, you don't get to move them. Draw the card. And you're supposed to shuffle, of course. So again, that. Imperial Army. So let's see. That's quite a few. So you may get the situation where you get almost the whole army. You've got your men at arms, you got your archers, you got your lord knights, you got your knights, and then you got your uh, crossbowmen. So it's like a whole army move. You've just got the cannon guys, got your soldiers there. Okay, so that looks like the whole um, Chaos Army. Now, notice when they do the whole army, they don't use the super units. They don't use the cannon. They don't use the ogre. But you've got the Chaos Warrior. You've got the Goblin. you got the Goblin Wolf Rider. And those goblins are small. you got your uh, Beast Men. you got your Lord of Chaos. you got your Orc. got your Chaos uh, Archer. That's fun little artwork. Uh, so then there's a double move for the Goblin Wolf Riders. So they each get to move two spaces. Now they still only get to attack once, but it's kind of like a charge card. Charge. Cannon again. Okay, so there you've got Orcs and you got Goblins. Even though it shows multiples, it's just whatever you happen to have on the, Imper or the Chaos side, you get to move. Okay, so you got just the just the knights. Notice the horse; it has that just that decorative. I'm not sure what that is called, but yeah, just the knights, not the not the lord knights. And knights again. Obviously, I'll shuffle these if we ever play it. Um, orcs and goblins again. Ogre, so the ogre champion gets to attack. Now this should remind you of the ogres from against the ogre horde, but actually it is a, a new, brand new design. It's uh, obviously inspired by that previous one, but it's different. Okay, so you've got the knights and the lord knights. Yeah, I think in the reinforcements pack, instead of uh, imperial lords, it's like. Or instead of the Lord Knights, it's the Imperial Lords. Instead of the Lords of Chaos, it's the 
Chaos Knights or something. It's like they just play with the terminology a little bit. And it, it's not that spectacular. I was hoping that they would have cooler units, but they didn't. So you got Beastmen, you got Goblins, you got Goblin Wolf Riders. But yeah, I was just happy to get this set because I felt like it was sold at a fairly reasonable price. And it was supposed to be complete. It wasn't. And so I did get a, a generous discount from the seller. I'm thankful for that. And the missing parts, the few that were missing, are on order from uh, another seller who happens to have them. So I think you've pretty much seen them all. There's there's 59 of these. So there's some variation in the artwork, but not a whole lot. Just enough to identify what you're looking at. But once you get through the deck, you're supposed to shuffle them again and then just keep dealing them. And you, you just keep doing that uh, until one side is eliminated or the goal has been accomplished. So I'm not going to go through all those, but there's 59 of these cards. These uh, I'm going to say that's bridge size cards. And then six of these ogre cards that are only used by the um, chaos side. So I'll set those aside. So continuing with the Battlemasters unboxing, a uh, game from 1992, if you're coming in late. I was certainly late today, but um, you've got these flags. Check this out. So these were originally stickers, and I couldn't find any more sticker sheets. So I'm probably just going to be looking around for some uh, scans that I can print out on sticker paper, or maybe even just on cardstock and just fold them over and glue them. But... Uh, the previous owner was able to take these flags and apply the stickers, which I think is cool. So these are just plastic. It's uh, it's a little, it feels just a little bit flimsier than the plastic that HeroQuest uses. You know, this stuff, this model plastic, um, it's a little shinier. And some of it, some of the pieces you can tell that maybe somebody left it out on the on the ground and you know, on the living room floor and somebody stepped on them and kind of, you know, scraped them against the floor. But mostly they're intact. So this is a nice big flag. And this is just a sticker. So the European versions have different artwork. So some of these are, are different. And I kind of am curious to see what they all are. I think I've seen photos, but I've never actually seen like a sticker sheet. So you got that. And then you've got another one. So these are the two big flags. So you can guess, Chaos, Imperial. So those are, I forget if those are used for the cannon crew or those for like the elite. Uh, elite is a different term. For the, like the Lord Knights and the Lords of Chaos, I think those are the ones because they're supposed to be like the strongest units. Actually, let me show you. The elite, this, this is uh, the concept of having elite units in this game. I think there's 22 of these little... Um, tokens or tiles or chits, whatever you want to call them. It's just a little axe. And there's there's 22 of these. And what they do is, let's say you win a campaign, whatever units that you have surviving, you can give them one of these elite uh, tiles on their little platform. And that means that they get to, I think, attack with one extra. I'm not sure if they defend with one extra as well. I'd have to consult the rules. But it gives them a little bonus. So that's another incentive for you to keep your units alive rather than just wasting them uh, if you can you can help it. So you got 22 of these. Okay, so back to the flags. So you got these two big flags. I mean, the flag poles are all the same height. And you can see these plastics are different colors. So let's see. You've got one, two. That I think that one's upside down. They're supposed to be like wings. But the way they did it looks like explosions. I guess it could be wings in the other way, but whatever. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And as you can tell, these are just stickers. So they're kind of... Uh, it's just just paper, kind of shiny paper, glossy. Let's see, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, looks like a cannon, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Let's see, is that all of them? I think that's all of them, but if I'm wrong, so l let me let me show you what the bases look like. So this is one of the bases. So this is just a sticker again. So it says four. So that's the attack value. Imperial Knights, that's the type of unit. There's the icon for it. And there's the division or, I don't know, platoon, company, unit, whatever you want to call it. So let's say there's that symbol. So let's look in here for that symbol. Here it is. And so you just kind of put the flag there. So there it is. Now, a lot of people, um, if you ever saw the AVGN board, James, he plays it like with this forward. And that's kind of how you might assume. But actually, so you're like pushing it forward. You're like, wait a minute, what unit is this? And you have to like look. It actually goes like this. So this faces towards the person who's controlling it. So you, you look at this. And of course, if the other person wants to know what it is, they either have to look around or you just tell them, hey, it's four. You know. So you put the flag there that matches it, and then you slot the uh, the units into the base. And I guess there's no real way to put the the uh, damage tiles other than just wherever they happen to fit. A lot of times I see people just toss them on top. But you move that. I almost thought it would be nice to put like maybe some felt backing on this, but this this battle mat is pretty pretty sturdy. So you can see this is underneath. It's the battle mat. Just that vinyl material. So in the European version, the UK version, uh, they're all these are all green. So I guess to simulate grass. Um, but in the uh, American or North American version, uh, this the good guys have tan, the Imperial Army, and then the Chaos have have dark brown. So there you've got two attack dice for the Wolf Riders and defense dice and the unit and so forth and remember remember these uh, elite tiles so the elite tile would go here like that could slot it in like that that just made a groove in it <laughs> it's not that great but you could do that too now if you're going to put the unit um, Oh, no, no, wait. I, I explained it wrong. Yeah, you wouldn't put the unit tile there. So remember these things? These unit tiles? Uh, on the adventure... I'm starting to remember it now. Because on the adventure that, that uses them, it shows the icons on the map. But what you do is, uh, when you're placing these things, you would place them like this. You just put them down. And, and you've placed them all. So you know what your units are, and they know what their units are. But when the battle begins, you turn it over. Or I guess you could put them randomly and turn them. But when you turn it over, then it's revealed that's the unit that needs to go there. So you take this off, and you put that unit there. So there's a way to use them, but it doesn't involve putting the, the thing in the slot here. That's for the, the elite tags or tiles. And you can tell I'm less familiar with this game than Hero Quest. I didn't have it growing up. I remember the commercial, but even the commercial wasn't as exciting. I don't think this sold the numbers that Hero Quest did, uh, if I had to guess. But okay, so I'll show you the different ones. So you got the Mighty Cannon, you've got the Wolf Riders, you got the Imperial Knights, Crossbowmen, Men at Arms, Imperial Knights. And you've got Imperial Archers, Beastmen, more Beastmen. You've got Orcs, you've got Chaos Warriors, you've got Wolf Riders. You 
you got Chaos Archers, you've got more Chaos Archers and Men at Arms. You've got quite a few here. Imperial Archers, Men at Arms, Imperial Knights, and Lord Knights. Yeah, Lord Knights versus Imperial Lords. <laughs> Now, if I did get those, they'd be green. So, But I guess I could just print the stickers if I can find them. Some people have made their own custom stickers. I think there's actually, a, if you go to Board Game Geek, there's people, which is a cool site, by the way. There's cool uh, things that people have done where they, instead of using this giant battle mat that's like four and a half feet wide, they just created like a small board and use like little tokens to move your armies around. It's like you could play it that way, but this is the epic, cool way to do it. So you've got Champions of Chaos, and you've got the Ogre Champion, and then the Goblins. So looking at our big, huge, growing pile here. Um, now you've got Chaos Warriors, you've got Goblins, and you've got Orcs. And that should be all the units, or the unit... Um, um, Platforms, bases, whatever you want to call them. So you got three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen for the chaos side, right there. A big pile of plastic, and this is a similar type of plastic. I guess it's uh, it's thicker than the figures. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 for the Imperial side. So 14 versus 11. So there's always more bad guys than good guys in these, these type of scenarios, I suppose. Let me put these flags back. I spent so much time organizing them. I'm going to have to put them back. Uh oh I'm wondering if I used the wrong bag. Well, I'll we'll figure that out later. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, we'll reorganize those. Another flag. These tiles, there's actually one missing. And so I guess this uh, useless gray tile is going to stand in for that one. But these are, let's see, these are the unit tiles for the Imperial side. So the gray ones that I showed you already for the Chaos side. So you got two, four, well, you should have ten because I've got one, one missing. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, and 10. So, so on the other side, it's just red. Like that. Cardboard tiles. All right, now here's the part that... Um, oh, one more thing. Skull tiles. And I want to say there's 50 of these. I think I did count them out. There's 50. So that looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? No, it's not the, that all those goofy teeth were not in the uh, HeroQuest version. And on the other side, it's just black. So you put these, I guess you could kind of do it like, uh, like that. Or you could just kind of toss it on there. Or you could do it on the side like that. Could you do it like Scrabble? Nope, it doesn't fit. So anyway, that's damage. That represents damage. So you got 50 of those. Obviously the bags are added later and not part of the original package. You've got the instruction manual, instruction booklet rather, Battle Masters. European version has a different cover, but that's some neat artwork to get you inspired. It's just regular paper. So it's mostly black and white, but you got some some red explaining. So Battle of the Borderlands explains everything. And, and it even gives a breakdown of all the cards as well. 
But as you can see, there's 27 pages. So a little bit longer than the HeroQuest manual, which was 23, but still not bad for such a epic game. And you've also got these in assembly instructions that tell you how to set it up. And I'll actually set one up for you to show you. So there's actually a specific way they want you to do this. So you snap the horses together and you put the rider on top of the horse. You snap the ogre together. And as you can see, the ogre is not articulated. He doesn't move at all. So unlike in Hero Quest, where he can move his arms and kind of move his head, he can't. He's just one solid piece once you snap them together. So the three mounted figures all go together like that. This goes facing you. Put the flagpole on the side. When you've got five figures, you actually put three in front facing the enemy. Or I'm sorry, two in front facing the enemy and three in the back. Um, three in the back, two in the front. And then the cannon guys go like this. So you've got the guy with the ramrod or whatever you call that on one side in his bucket. And then you got the guy with the torch on the other side uh, ready to light the cannon. You got the three horses and you apply the labels and so forth. And this is the proper way to put the tower together. So if you lost your instructions, you can go to hasbro.com. They've got a, I forget the exact URL, but they've got a link where you can actually look up the old manual. So there's scans of these, but that's how you put it together. You put the, the top part in on last. So this part actually goes in last and it's A, B, C, D, E. So if you can see there, you've got D and B facing each other. And B is supposed to be the last one that goes in. There's these little pegs on the side too. That it'll only go one way. So, but when you're done, you've got a kind of a cool little tower. I've seen videos where people have painted this thing. It's, it's harder plastic, similar to the bases, actually. I would say. So the only piece of furniture, if you will. So what do you have here? So you've got three of these uh, red horses. So these horses are for the knights. So let's say we're going to do one. Um, Imperial Knights. So, okay. So it'd be like this. You'd slot it in like that. And actually this opens up the whole world because if you want to buy figures that just have slots on them, you could buy them and put them in here. Uh, you could make your own units. So if you want to put some elves or dwarves or scaven or whatever you want, femmers. So you get these guys out and you put them on. Put one in the middle here. Put one on the edge. I guess I wouldn't have to put them on the far edge. I could just put them like that. Sometimes you kind of got to fiddle with them. I, I've seen people use sticky tack, like if the figures are not fitting perfectly. Actually, this would be a good spot to put the damage because, look, it doesn't take up the whole thing. You kind of have to tuck it in, though. So let's see if it would work. I suppose it depends on the figure. And yeah, it kind of works. Kind of slip it in there. Like that. And the second one just kind of barely fits. So it might be easier just to do it in the front like that. Or just, just throw it on the platform. So you've got your three there. And let's see if I have that flagpole. Whoa, I'm just making a mess here. Sorry about that. Okay, which one was it? It was the... If you play this enough, you probably start to memorize the names. Hmm. So the Imperial Knights of Prince Normand. Normand. Normand Bates.
this the one? Since I'm less familiar, let's just uh, I'm so the the true fans can laugh because they know the answer. But let's just pretend it's this one. So you put it like that. So you've got your little flagpole like that. So setup time for this game is supposed to be like 15 minutes, I think, estimated. So you've got some time to do it. The box actually shows you. See, I should have been looking at the box. Okay, let's look at the box. Imperial Knights of Prince Norman. Yeah, I was right. So that's the that's the correct flag for them. So I'm not such a noob after all to the world of battle masters, the world of epic fantasy battle. There's actually no magic in this. Um, Hero Quest has a whole bunch of magic in it because you're dealing with uh, heroes and stuff. In this one, it's just pure fighting. I mean, I guess you could say maybe the cannon is a is a type of magic, a type of alchemy, but uh, there's no wizards or warlocks or not even any undead creatures. So I guess you could imagine this is the war that's going on while the heroes are doing their thing, or maybe right before, right after. So let's see, where are our knights? Let's get these knights going. I'm not going to set up the entire board. That would uh, be quite a stream, especially uh, the dis disappointment at the end when I'm not actually playing anybody. Got to get organized. Where did I put those guys? Ah, here they are. Okay, so here are the Imperial Knights, and there should be nine of them. Now, this one came pre-painted. Uh, the previous owner, or one of the previous owners, painted this guy. And that's actually pretty much what he looks like on the box, too. So, if you want to just get the detail there. Come on, autofocus. There we go. So... They did a pretty decent job there. So you want to put him on there. He's got this little peg on his crotch there, and he just goes in the little hole. Ta-da! There's, there's your Imperial Knight. So if we want to throw these other guys on there with their lances. Now these lances are, it's all one solid piece. It's really, they're really thin, and they get bent, they get broken. You're not actually supposed to handle them very much. You just put them on the... I mean, you could yank them off of their ba the base like when they get destroyed. Like you go, oh, I took one damage. Oh, let's pull that guy off. But you don't have to. It's more for show than anything else. So you move that along. You just you just pick up the base like that, and you move it or you slide it. I guess you could pick it up by the flagpole, but I don't know if that would be the best way to do it. Probably just like that. So that's what the enemy sees, and that's what you see. So there's an example. But I'll just set these guys aside for now, and we'll look at the other units. I forgot to show one other piece of terrain. They're these four plastic hedges. See these? They got they just kind of set up like that. And the map tells you where to put them, but they're basically just solid barriers. So unfortunately, the the knights can't leap over them with their horses, which you think they they could. But the uh, the archers can shoot right over the top. Everybody else just is completely blocked by them. They're permanent barriers. They can't be destroyed or anything. So set those aside. Nice plastic sound. Okay, so we got we got nine of these nine of these knights, and they've got different uh, different pennants and things that they've got. Different banners. I've actually restored a few of these. I've used green stuff to like recreate the little. Arrowhead. You can you can buy those uh, plastic cocktail skewer, olive skewer swords, and kind of cut them up and then use those to kind of repair the broken. Because nine times out of ten, when you buy these guys, they're going to be broken. The lances are going to be broken off. I guess you could use toothpicks too, you could paint them, whatever you want to do. So you got nine of those, and then you got three of these Lord Knights. So you can see they got a fancier lance, and they got a fancier helmet. And the horses that these guys ride, these three guys, are the the armored horses. 
So see that? It's kind of got the, the fake uh, unicorn armor thing. So the good guys and the bad guys use these horses. Now I'll show you there's, I like how they varied the, the colors of the plastic. So you've got gray, you got black, you got dark gray, and there's different shades of, of, of gray as well. So it's not all the exact same color. So it's a little easier to distinguish. And the previous owner, so those are the same. So these would be like for the, presumably these would be for like the, the Lords of Chaos, the, or yeah. Champions of Chaos, not the Chaos Lords. That's from the uh, Reinforcements expansion. Um, these were painted. So these were for the Knights. So I, I kind of like the job that they did. And the silver and gold. And making it a white horse. But you still you can still see the gray, so you can still tell. Now that saddle is going to get scratched up because that's where the guy sits. A little peg. This one's kind of cool. Now, I don't like the fact they used enamel because that's going to be hard to remove if I ever decide to just strip off the paint and use just the gray or make my own paint job. I probably just paint over the top of it. But not bad. So you've got, let's see, six of those. Battle steeds, armored horses, elite horses, whatever you want to call them. Let's see, what else do we have for the, oh yeah, for the Imperial side, you've got three of these knight horses that are yellow. So that was a color that wasn't used in Hero Quest. You didn't have anything that was yellow. And blue was only used in some of the later quest packs. So you've got brilliant blue. Of course, actually in Hero Quest, they tend to use kind of a frosty, like pastel blue. This is, these are cool looking. So this this helps you distinguish on the battlefield which which unit is which. And so that should do it for the knights, the different types of knights and lord knights. So continuing with the imperial side, you've got the crossbowmen. Don't those guys look familiar? They don't quite look like the mercenaries or men at arms from Hero Quest. They actually have a different pose. Um, so the weapon is not removable. It's just integrated into it. But and these guys do actually have boots on. They don't look like they're barefoot or wearing like toe socks or whatever you call those in the Hero Quest version. I think they look pretty cool. But there's five of those guys. So five of those crossbowmen. For the good guy side, nice red color for the Empire. The Empire in uh, Warhammer Fantasy is kind of like it's kind of like the Roman Empire and the Holy Roman Empire, and just a fantasy version of that. But it's also like King Arthur, and like everything's all kind of mixed together. Oh no, wait, what am I saying? No, that's Bretonia. Oh, it's all very confusing. I'm sorry. If you're a, if you're a, a Warhammer aficionado, you know all this stuff, and you don't have to be told. I'm still learning it, so forgive me. But yeah, so here you've got the archers. There's 10 of these guys. And some of these guys, like the top of the bow is broken off. So I'm going to have to figure out how to rig up something to fix that. So there's this stuff called green stuff. And it's, it's, it's modeling clay that hardens when you mix the blue with the yellow. You mix them together and it forms green. And people use that to like sculpt parts. So I may just sculpt something on there. Or I could just take some plastic and glue it on there. They also have something called blue stuff, which is used to make to clone or duplicate parts. So what I could do is I could get some blue stuff, supposedly, what people tell me, I'm first time at it, is, is copy this part, like make a mold out of it, and then put some green stuff in it, and then make the part like perfect. So, but we'll see. So some of these guys may have rougher bows than the others. But yeah, there's 10 of these guys, 10 of these archers for the Empire. And the last, oh, no, there's two more. Okay. So these, the main part of the Imperial Army are these men-at-arms. These uh, footmen with their halberds. They're not really pikes. It's more of a pole axe and a shield. And I noticed the divisions of them, there's there's like darker gray and lighter gray, which I thought was nice. 
I think uh, with the European sets, the colors are slightly different. So uh, some of the figures that are like dark gray are light gray and vice versa. And you'll see some green figures. There's like a dark green and more of like a, a forest green. So there are different variations. And I think one of these guys has the head of his ax broken off, which is unfortunate because uh, it's going to be hard to duplicate that unless I buy some blue stuff, which, you know, I don't mind experimenting with little crafty things and learning how to do it. Uh, but let me see how many of these guys are supposed to be in there. I guess you can judge by the shield. So they got one type of shield, two, three... I think there should be like 15 of these guys. Well, let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five. Kind of like little statues. There's the broken one. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I was right. So three, three uh, units three base units of, of the of five guys each for a total of 15 men at arms for the Imperial side. And then last but not least, the cannon, and it's the mighty cannon and its crew. So there's the cannon. I think there's a there's a different shade of red for some of the other sets, and the cannon really doesn't move. It's just it just is what it is. It's pretty neat looking. Detailed. And then the cannon crew are these two Imperial Knights. So not Britannian Knights. I mean, I guess they could be mercenaries, but they're kind of dressed like real-life mercenaries. But you got the guy with his bucket, uh, maybe of water to wash this thing, wash the inside of the cannon. Or it could be powder, pour the powder in, and then ram the cannonball in. This guy's got his, his little torch, which is kind of bent as you might imagine, but they just go next to the cannon. So one each of those guys. Now we finally get into the Chaos Army, the monsters. I always liked playing as the monsters in games when I was a kid. And I was starting to lose interest in HeroQuest around the time this would have come out. But if I had bought it for 20 bucks back then, that would have been pretty cool. Here's the crowning glory of the the bad guys army. This is the ogre champion. Now he's nice and black, so it's kind of hard to see some of the detail on him. But as you can see, he's inspired by, but actually different. He doesn't look like any of the ogres in Against the Ogre Horde or in the Elf Quest pack. He's kind of his own thing, and he's he's huge. He's he's bigger than all those or ogres. Um, he he just towers over them. So if you wanted to use this guy in Hero Quest, you could. Because actually, I use Reaper Bones miniatures for those ogres, and um, you know they're they're not much bigger than this guy. So let's compare him to some Hero Quest figures to show you. So here's the gargoyle, the huge gargoyle from Hero Quest, and here's the ogre champion. So much bulkier, but he's definitely the size. Let's compare him to the, oh, the little Chaos Warlock. <laughs> These are Hero Quest figures I'm showing you. There's the little Chaos Warrior. Oh no! <laughs> There's an orc. Uh, little goblin. Mighty Fimmer. Not so tough now. <laughs> Let's, uh, compare him to a mummy. See, why didn't they make any undead units? I guess, I mean, that would be an interesting mod. You could have a bunch of skeletons. Maybe the Witch Lord is commanding an army. But here's the, the ogre. So you get one of these guys, just one. If you get the reinforcements, you get two more. Oh, yeah. Chaos Warriors. So here's the Chaos Warriors. They're dark gray, but the alternate is like a light gray. Auto focus. So, yeah, he's got his big shield. 
It's got a big cape. And notice the helmet. So these little parts, I think it was unclear if you're supposed to like snap it off clean like that, or if you're supposed to leave it on. But actually, if you look at Warhammer Fantasy, their figures, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, um, the different uh, Chaos Warriors actually have different helmets. So now in Hero Quest, they all have this little ball on top. And, and I always thought, you know, they need to have that. That shows that they're part of Zargon's army for Hero Quest. Just like the Chaos Warlock has, has it on his helmet. See? See that little ball? But some of the Chaos Warriors have it and some of them don't. So the fact that they broke it off on some of them and left it on others is kind of in keeping with um, maybe the spirit of, of things. Notice how they're different shades of, of gray. Very subtle. So there's a bunch of those. I think there's 10. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, 10 Chaos Warriors. So they fight on foot in Battle Masters. Goblins. Oh, yeah. Let me just do a little comparison here again. So Hero Quest Chaos Warrior and Battle Masters Chaos Warrior. So if you wanted to convert these guys to Hero Quest, they could, it could work. So you just would cut that off and glue them to a, a base. I think Zealot Miniatures sells them. Now, I'm not a paid sponsor or shill or advertiser for any of those companies. But I think the Chaos Warriors look pretty good. Just put that gargoyle away. Now we've got goblins. Classic little goblins. And there should be 10 of these. So there's two little units. And let me compare them to the Hero Quest goblins. Yep. They're just a tad smaller than the Hero Quest ones. I don't mind the size of goblin. That's kind of what I'm used to. But these goblins are itty bitty. Itty bitty little goblins. They can't possibly do any harm except in great numbers, right? So there's a bunch of them. And the style is very similar, obviously. But they got these scimitar or falchion type type swords. Oh yeah, the next unit is the Goblin Wolf Riders. Now, I was short on these, so look at this guy. So his spear was cracked right off. And so what I did was I took a little hand drill and I drilled down into his fist there to make a hole. And I got uh, some plastic coated paper clip and I cut it with a wire cutter and I inserted it there. My, my hands are really dry from, from the glue. So just pardon my fingers, I'm not a hand model. Anyway, I put that in there and I painted it and that's a piece of green stuff. Now it looks pretty primitive. It doesn't look fancy like the original. The original would have been like a, a spearhead with a little bit of like feather or fur or something on the end. But here it just kind of looks like a Stone Age spear. But anyway, that's the little goblin. And again, compared it to here, he's 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 a tiny little guy. But I only had three in this set. There's supposed to be six. So those guys are on order. And the ones that are on order will have unbroken spears. So not Brittany. But uh, yeah, they just look kind of look like they have Play-Doh, but from far away they look okay. And what these guys ride are the wolves, the giant wolves. So these goblin wolf riders, you would insert them. See, there's the wolf. And there's six of these. And they're two slightly different shades of gray. It's very subtle. You can probably barely tell on camera. But let's try to put one of these on there. I might have to trim the little uh, pegs so they can fit better. Okay, whoops. All right, that guy needs some trimming. There, so there's the wolf rider. 
So that's the Chaos version, Mounted Warrior. So yeah, you should have six Wolf Riders and six Giant Wolves. And of course, Giant Wolves featured in the Elf Quest pack, but they were blue and they were like leaping off of the base. Whereas these are kind of, looks like they're running or maybe raising their paw to uh, start to attack. So you got those guys. And then everyone's favorite, the Orcs. The Orcs, as they say. So this looks quite a bit different than your Hero Quest Orc. So let's let's compare. Let's grab one with a sword so we can see. Okay, so there's your Hero Quest Orc there, and there's your Battle Masters Orc. Yeah, you know, you could say they're probably from the same family. Their armor is pretty similar, but. I don't know. I, I like the Hero Quest look better, but I mean, these could be just like guards or just, you know, guys running around, um, you know, fighting, whereas these guys are ready for war. They've got the full chain mail, they've got the shoulder armor, they've got the helmets, they've got huge swords. Actually, this guy has a bigger sword. This is like a boss orc. So let's look at some of the other orcs from Hero Quest. It's kind of your standard sword orc. Yeah, his sword is pretty similar in size, like a scimitar or falchion. I, I could be saying that wrong, but yeah. Some people have modified these for Hero Quest as elite orcs, or like mountain orcs, or black orcs, or whatever you want to call them. Some some type of special unit. I don't know. I always I always thought that the uh, the orcs kind of looked like they were smiling, like they just they just love killing, they love fighting, they just love violence and war. That's what they're all about, and that's why we love the orcs and we love to hate them um, in fantasy. So there's ten of those, and actually I'm missing one. My set is missing one orc, so there's one more on order that I'll be getting. And all these guys are in pretty good shape, although it looks like they're, yeah, again, somebody maybe like stepped on it or scraped it across the floor or bounced it off the, the floor if they were playing on a table. So we got 10 of those. And then we got Beast Men, 10 of these. Now, this is a new monster in this game, although it does appear in. I'm trying to think if it appears. Yeah, I think it appears in Advanced Hero Quest, and then, of course, it appears in. Warhammer Fantasy Battle. So that's that's what a, a beast man looks like. And of course it's black, glorious black. So you kind of got to look at the light to see the details. But it's it's like a minotaur, really. Or maybe not a satyr, but more like a or satyr, but a minotaur. But that axe looks very familiar. That that looks much like the a smaller version of the Chaos Warrior axe. So I like the stylistic similarities. And I think people have modded these for Hero Quest as well. But it's like, well, what kind of stats would you give him? I don't know. Looks like he's got a side dagger there too, besides his axe and shield. But there's ten of those guys. It's two different divisions. And as I said before, these are just stickers that go on the shields. So if you lose those, you could paint whatever you want on there. You could print out some stickers and glue them on. You could just glue a piece of paper and just draw on it if you wanted to. And so then the last part of the Chaos Army are the, um, I keep wanting to say Lords of Chaos. I think that's, uh, no, Lords of Death from Big Trouble in Little China. These are the uh, Champions of Chaos. So it's a Chaos Warrior with a fancier looking helmet and a shield and a lance, which of course ends in a wicked looking spear point. And there's one that's black, which I would you could put on the black horse, and then there's a gray one and another gray one. And one of these guys I had to glue his lance back together because it was broken. You can see the detail a little easier. And of course that peg is for putting him on the horse. 
So let's get those horses out again and put him on a mount. So let's say you do it like that. Ta-da! There he is on his war horse, ready for battle. Or maybe put him on the gray one, or the, the dark gray one, so it matches. Well, that actually might be his because it fits perfectly. Uh, it's just a coincidence because it's the same. It's the same exact mold. So it just kind of looks like a big mass of gray. So maybe you'd want to put him on a different one. Let's see what if you put him on a white horse? See, bad guys can ride white horses. It's not just good guys. This reminds me of the Masters of the Universe. Um, what was he called? Not Stridor. There was a, a robotic horse that He-Man had. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. That's probably why they chose those colors. They're like, oh yeah, it's him. <laughs> so, or maybe She-Ra. Well, She-Ra's, I think, yeah, it had wings and brighter colors because it, it was a girl show. It was He-Man for girls. He woman, she woman, she ra, whatever. I've watched the remake from 2002, but I haven't seen the newest remake. I guess fans were pretty divided on that one, which is too bad. I mean, I like it when remakes of stuff come out, and you know, fans, fans young and old can appreciate it. But a lot of times, it just ends up, you know, you you've got new fans that like the new stuff, and the old fans don't like the new stuff. That's how it goes, I guess change it too much. Sorry, I got off on a little side tangent, but just it reminded me of that. So, um, yeah, you just have three of those Champions of Chaos, and that's uh, that's the army. So there's over 100 miniatures. I think there's 100 and... Well, you could add up all the numbers. It's just... I think it's like 105, depending on how you count it. I mean, does the cannon count as one, or is it just the crew, or what do you do? So let's move this stuff aside. And we'll take a look at the battle mat. And credit to Board James. He made a big, big joke about how big it was, and it, it really is big. So there you can see the uh, the hexagon square. Well, I keep saying squares. Hexagons, hexes. They're not squares, they're hexes, because there's six sides. And so you put your like that or you know you put your tile on there whatever and let me just I can't actually unfold it because this card table is not big enough but it's really just the same image repeated three times so it's not that amazing but there you go so you've got like some like simulated farmland and you've got some stone there road or whatever and what else? Oh yeah, you've got this river. And so you can't cross the river, but is that a ford right there? You could ford the river. Here you couldn't unless there was a tile there. And then you've got these nice little dirt roads. But yeah, it's just like the, the river just goes across and there's just road 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 so it's the same image repeated three times and on the other side it's just white there's nothing on the other side and the thing folds up and it gets kind of creased up but i think if you as long as you store this properly like it's not just laying out in the sun or something it'll probably last you a long time and you don't have people like sitting on it or putting their full weight body weight on it or scraping it but it's held up pretty well for something that came out about 30 or three decades ago. So that's Battlemasters. Oh yeah, and I'll show you the back. Other people have done unboxings and they always got to dump everything out and show you the back of the box. So I'll show you that. Unlike HeroQuest, there's, it's not white, it's, it's just brown. There's no drawings or anything on the inside. And let's flip it over. So on here, you can see there's, it tells you about each of the units so that you know how to put the flags, the proper stickers on each part. 
but on the back, which I already showed you, but here you can see it again. We'll switch to the detailed view. So there it gives you some examples of how to paint each of the figures if you wanted to paint them. So see, doesn't that look familiar? How that knight was painted. Now they chose to, while well, they were painting the war horses, the battle horses, they weren't painting these there. I kind of like them unpainted because that's kind of how I would be nostalgic about them when they first came out. But since I didn't have Battle Masters, it's kind of like I don't have the same nostalgia for it that I have for Hero Quest. Um, so I don't know if I might go through and start painting these, but this is going to take a lot longer than painting Hero Quest because you do have quite a few more miniatures this time than Hero Quest. And Battle Masters, I don't know. It, uh, it came out more recently, but it's not as popular, so it might cost you more. I got this set for 85 bucks, and it, half of it was refunded. For, well, $40 was refunded because of the missing parts. And I knew a lot of the pieces were broken and were going to need to be repaired. Um, but even so, I think overall I only paid like 75 bucks to get a complete, a complete set. Well, it'll be, probably be closer to 80. Like, let's say I spend five bucks on five dollars on uh, printed, uh, printed stickers because there are some stickers that are peeled off or missing. Actually, the person that had this or one of the previous owners actually stuck some of the stickers to the box. So I could try to get a maybe like a steam iron and like steam those off and then like glue them. But even so, there's still a few missing. There's still a few that are torn. And unless I'm going to simulate like a, a, a ratty torn up banner, it's not going to be that good. So anyway, that's uh, that's Battle Masters. And I think um, if you're trying to buy this set just to get more miniatures for HeroQuest, I'm not sure if it's really worth your while. You probably would just want to go on eBay or wherever and just get the individual pieces that you want and modify them. Of course, I, I kind of feel bad about that sometimes, like doing that sort of thing, because I think, oh, I'm, I'm depriving somebody else of uh, the opportunity to complete their Battlemaster set. I mean, even though nowadays you do have 3D printing, well, there's another way to do it. Just uh, get your 3D printer and just pr get one of these guys. Like if, let's say you want one of these Chaos Warriors printed, just get them printed, but with a HeroQuest base instead of, you know, buying one of these and chopping the base off and gluing a HeroQuest base to him. Just, just 3D print him and then he'll be the scale and the size and everything that you want already. Especially if you're going to paint him, because yeah, 3D printing quality has really improved over the years, but it's not quite up to the same standards of like injection molding plastic, all those fancy terms. But uh, but yeah, that's Battle Masters. So the uh, remake of Hero Quest is still coming out. Hasbro has been pretty tight-lipped about it, but they are saying that. They have this convention called PulseCon. Oops, sorry, bumped the camera there. Uh, on October 23rd, I guess they'll be streaming some information about that and talking about Hero Quest. So I have no idea if they'll ever remake Battle Masters, but I just wanted to talk about this and share that I had this. And I'll probably play it a lot less than Hero Quest just because of all the setup time and the space required to, to play it. But it is related to the Hero Quest world and kind of has some neat things. So that's pretty much it. And let me just see if there's anything else we need to cover. I don't think so. I thought about doing a stream yesterday, but it just didn't pan out. Just didn't have the time. So we didn't do it. And this time, you know, I was I was kind of behind on things. And so it was just a little bit late getting things done. But that's OK. We uh, did what we set out to do. And that's the point. And so we'll just have to see you on a future stream. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We set out to do. And that's the point. And so we'll just have to see you on a future stream. Ah, so we've got a new person here. Well, hello, welcome. 
yeah, when when I'm streaming like this, I, I just focus on OBS Studio. I don't really look at the uh, the chat window. So I'll have to start doing that again more in the future to interact with uh, people that come to show their support. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, eventually, this video will get posted up on the YouTube channel as a backup because I'm not an affiliate or partner yet. And so the stuff only stays there for 14 days before it gets removed. But it will appear on YouTube, and that is linked uh, there. So, all right. We'll see you next time on HeroQuest Fans. I'm not sure the next time we'll be streaming just because uh, I will be gone this weekend. A friend of mine's getting married. And funnily enough, uh, the person who sold me uh, this Battle Masters is getting married. So I don't think it's the same person, but I may have to ask. It's like, did you just sell me a, a board game? <laughs> you know, we, we always use those pseudonyms online. So we don't necessarily know. Actually, the guy I bought HeroQuest from is funny because he actually was in my, my hometown or like really close to it. So once I realized that, I just was sent him a message and said, hey, do you want to meet? I mean, we'll meet in daylight and we'll meet at the local Walmart and just exchange and I can save on shipping. And he agreed to do it. It was cool. Nice guy. Um, his, uh, his kids were sick and I was like, okay, I hope your <laughs> kids are doing better. You know, this was long before COVID. So we weren't, weren't worried about, you know, the pandemic. Um, there was a bag in here somewhere. Oh boy. Well, that's okay. Always put your toys away, kids. Well, that's the end of the stream, and I hope you all have a great night. See you next time on HeroQuest Fans. Thanks. Take care.